Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to the Video Village. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at a feature inside of DaVinci Resolve Color that is very useful for bringing out detail in an image or part of an image and that little tool is called a contrast pop. If we go over to our effects tab and to our library here, uh, it's down here inside of Resolve Color, and it's right there, Contrast Pop. And so we're going to take a look at this particular shot because I have found in my experience that this particular feature, this Contrast Pop feature, is especially useful on landscape detail, uh, but also logos and other things. But I have used it primarily to enhance the details uh, of landscapes, and so that's why I chose this particular shot of the Matterhorn. And, um, and so I'm going to walk you through this node tree in the grade and just kind of show you what I did here, but with a focus on uh, this particular element, this contrast pop. So to jump right in, I'm just going to go ahead and walk you through this node tree and show you what I did. So this was the original shot from stock footage from Motion Array. And so the first thing I did was I went to the primaries and I adjusted the levels. And I just pulled it down a little bit. It was a little bit bright, so I just kind of pulled everything down. Not too much, but just a little bit. And then I went to my color wheel, and I pushed the color overall far more into the blues. And the reason is because, generally speaking, when you're grading an outdoor image and there's a sky, if the sky is uh, tinted a little bit more green, uh, it, it, it conveys a bit more warmth in the sky, whereas if you push the grade into the blue, you get a much cooler effect and you kind of get the, the feeling of cold. And so obviously this is in the Swiss Alps and I really wanted to push that into the, into the cold. And that's what I did here with the temperature. So if I turn that back to zero, we get that greenish tint back in. And so I just pulled this all the way over and I think it was like at about 400 to just give it some to make it feel colder. Okay, and then what I did was I started stacking a parallel node structure right here. And so the first thing I did was I grabbed this mountain area up here, the face of this mountain, and um, it was pretty peaked out. The highlights were a little hot, and so I decided to pull that down a little bit and just bring in a little more detail here in the face of it. And I also pushed it uh, a little bit warm. I went into the log wheels and I took the highlights and I just pushed them into the orange just a little bit to sort of enhance that sunlight, that late day sunlight effect. Now, here is the secret sauce. This is the contrast pop node. And so in order to properly show this, let me just do a before and after. And let me jump, let's see, let me turn off the mask tool so you can see this a bit better. Let's go full screen. And so keep your eye up here. So this is before and this is after. Before, after, before, after. So as you can see, this contrast pop is really bringing out the details of this peak. Now, this is a this is a high-res video file. I believe it was 4K. And so it's got a lot of detail in it already, but I felt like in looking at it, like this could just be a bit more punchy. And so by using the contrast pop effect, it really brings that out a bit more. And so if I go over here to the effects tab, here's the contrast pop. And so um, it will start uh, at zero and then you take the detail amount and you can start to push it up and as you can see look at what it's doing it's really it's obviously introducing a lot of contrast but contrast tends to bring in detail especially when you have shadows and highlights so right out of the gate even with just a little bit of this you can see what it's doing it's really making that peak stand out and that's what we want I feel like Personally, if I was grading the shot for a commercial or even for a documentary or film, I would want that peak to feel very sharp, 
very sharp, very contrasty, and very cold. So there's a detail size slider, which is gonna help kind of customize where the detail falls. And I encourage you that as you work with this stuff to play around with it and just sort of see what works for you. Every shot is gonna be different. So you're gonna to wanna to add this or drop it in accordingly. We have a low threshold, which will kind of, again, determine where the effect is going uh, and how that gets applied. There's also a softness here, so you can kind of soften up some of that. And there's a global blend that's essentially a, uh, an opacity of this effect. So you can bring it in, you can bring it out, you can split the difference. Again, it's up to you. This is meant to be used like salt on a dish. You put in exactly what you need. You want to find the right amount to add. You don't always want to use this, and there are certain applications where I would not use this tool. But in this case, um, to me, this makes a huge difference with that peak. I mean, it's a very, very strong difference. Again, sometimes I've used this uh, with logos. Uh, and other, let's say, machinery where I felt like uh, some of the parts needed a bit more contrast and a bit more push to the front. And so this is a very useful tool for that. All right, so now that we've covered the main focus of this, which again is the contrast pop here, and what I did was I isolated that with a mask. So I used in the mask tools, I used a custom pen tool and I drew the shape and I added some feathering, softness on the inside and the outside and softness overall. And then I tracked it. I used the tracker and I tracked it along the shot. Okay, so now jumping back to the rest of the note, if you're curious, I went ahead after that and used hue versus hue curve, which is right here. And I did that to push the blue and make it even more blue, to really, really pull it and push that, that hue of the blue and just keep it very, very, very strong. Next, I was looking at the parade here and I noticed that the the blue in the low range was elevated above the green and the red, and I actually wanted to neutralize the darks just a little bit. So I went to the log wheels, and I took the shadow, and I pushed it into the warmer tones to counteract the blue, and so now the, the bottom is a little bit more uniform. Next, I introduced a vignette. And I used my custom curves to pull down that midpoint. So again, it kind of creates, again, it pushes the focus where? Where do we want the focus? We want it here. We want it on the peak. I used the global custom curves as sort of a final curves adjustment to really exaggerate everything and make this feel very, very cold. Like we're going into nighttime and you can just feel uh, how cold it is up here on this peak. And then, of course, the last thing I did was I added film grain because, well, I mean, why not? Okay, well, that's going to do it for me. This is a short one, but I hope this helps you understand this particular tool, the contrast pop. Again, I encourage you to play around with it. If you go to your library or effects library, you'll see in Resolve Color, it's right here, contrast pop, and you can drag it onto your node and play around with it. All right, that's going to do it for me this time. Have a great rest of the day, and I will see you in the next video.